Well, holding up really well for the market. The Nifty is now up over 100 points, 114 points to be precise, and not giving up any of its uh, gains. Infosys, Tata Motors, HCL Tech, Wipro are still your top gainers with gains of around 2 to 4 odd percent. But in a bid to boost real estate activity in Maharashtra, the government cut real estate premiums by 50 percent, remember, till the 31st of December. Experts say the move is a win win for home buyers as well as developers. Pirocha Godrich, the executive chairman at Godrich Properties, joins us now to discuss all of this and more. Pirocha, good morning. Happy New Year to you and your team. Um, hope you have a great one. Uh, thank you for joining us on the show. I want to start first, before I ask you about the premium cuts, uh, I want to start by asking about business in general. Because in the first half of the year, the volumes for your company went up almost 11% and you're sitting on around 4.2 million square feet of sales in the first half. Uh, what do you think you can eke out in the second half and how is demand in general? Is it much better than when we spoke last? Good morning, Sonia. I hope 2021 is off to a good beginning for, for all of you at CNBC and all your listeners. Um, I think we're starting off the year on a, on a positive note. There was obviously a lot of concern last year with the with, with COVID and the lockdown that things were going to be very tough for the sector. I think those concerns are really past us. As you mentioned, we had a good um, first half to the financial year from a sales volume perspective. We actually expect the second half to be much better, and especially the fourth quarter where we have a large number of launches planned. So I think the, you know the the momentum in the industry is shifting in a very positive direction, um, and I think the the big difference that we are seeing, particularly from the first half, is actually on the cash flow side, where collections in the third quarter were much stronger than in the first half, as construction was back to full swing with labor on site being you know above pre-COVID levels. So I think the the, the big concerns that we saw in the early part of the year are largely behind us. How quickly we get to now, um, you know, a really strong period for the real estate sector, which has been overdue for the last few years, is is what remains to be seen. Okay. But I think all all signs are trending in that direction. Okay. Uh, good morning, Pirocha. Thank you for your greetings, and we reciprocate them. May the year be grand and glorious for you and for everyone uh, at uh, Godrej as well. Uh, you know, uh, well, there are several questions in my head actually. Knight Frank put out a report and they said that they have seen positive traction in terms of higher home sales in uh, uh, 2020 over 2019 for all the southern cities, you know, Bangalore, Bangalore was the best and followed by uh, Hyderabad, uh, Chennai. But for MMR, they said minus 14. Isn't that your big market? So uh, has it been as good for you? So I think we're seeing, you know, reasonable traction in all markets. I wouldn't say that we're yet in kind of a bull real estate market by, by any stretch yet, but I think that that is the direction we're heading. And at least from our own sales, you know, we have four markets that are of prime focus for us, Mumbai and Pune in Maharashtra. And in NCR, we're present in, you know, Delhi, um, Noida and Gurgaon and, mm. and Bangalore. And in all four of those markets, NCR, Mumbai, Pune, and Bangalore, we've seen good traction and you know reasonably equal sales across those markets. Um, I think generally speaking, you know, Bangalore as a real estate market has been the best performing really over the last few years. Mm. As job creation numbers, their office demand there have all been um, at very healthy levels. But I, I, I'm not very concerned about what we're seeing in, in the Mumbai market. In fact, I think the twin decisions of the Maharashtra government to first reduce stamp duty, which created a rush of registrations over these past three months and will continue to do so over the next three months. And now this decision to reduce premiums uh, is extremely encouraging for the real estate market um, here in Maharashtra. So I expect to see Mumbai do quite well. Okay, actually that yeah. is the key question. Mm -hmm. How much of higher cost savings will you make, uh, uh, say, would it be 15%, 10% in the construction of a house? And how much do you need to pass it on, given the, uh, you know, supply pressures? So Lata, I think it's a little too early to comment on this because the final notification hasn't come. And as you would know, in Mumbai, there are a lot of different categories of projects like open land, slum redevelopment, mm -hmm. um, you know, normal redevelopments. And each of these will be impacted differently by this notification. From what we currently understand, we expect about a 5 to 10 percent reduction in overall development cost, depending on the project. It could be lower or higher than that for certain projects, as I mentioned, depending on their category. That is obviously a very meaningful number and we do think can help spur activity in the sector. Also, from a timing of 
flow this is this is you typically charges the developers have to pay at the very initial stages mm-hmm. of projects mm-hmm. so by that amount coming by while the overall amount might be 5 to 10% the upfront amount would come down by an even greater amount and therefore mm-hmm. improve liquidity situation for developers allowing them to launch more projects so i do think the stamp duty decision was an important one and we saw already the momentum that created i think this can be even more beneficial um and i therefore expect the combination of these decisions with the impact on covid having sort of increased um, our customers desire towards home ownership through all the research we've seen both here in india and globally and that combined with affordability even before these decisions being the best it's been in in 20 years because of low interest rates and property prices having not appreciated over the last 5 to 7 years um i think all boards well for the sector in, in over the couple of years ahead the only chink in the armor perhaps is the way commodity prices are rising right i mean more, both cement and steel prices and not just that i mean nitin gadkari was making a point uh, you know about how the steel prices cement prices are very high there are also reports that that is if affecting home construction because of unavailability of steel rods is that a genuine uh, issue and how would all of this impact your own margins Yes, yeah, so on a lighter note, you know it's the real estate sector, so there's always many chinks in the armor. <laughs> go wrong, but um, no, I think you know obviously cost inflation will be something that we we need to be concerned about. Um, that said, as I said, all the other structural cost drivers for the sector, whether now the government's attention we can see is fully on making sure that, that the real estate sector is used as a major lever. to promote overall growth in the economy so i think you know this sector as you know has a large number of ancillary sectors depending on it including steel and cement it is the largest source of employment for the country behind agriculture so i think you know that government attention on promoting the sector rather than um, controlling growth in the sector i think is is very meaningful and i do think that the industry can take some of these cost escalations in stride um as long as the overall environment continues to uh, to move in a positive direction which we expect it will okay can i expect some crystal ball gazing i know it's really mm-hmm. tough when you're sitting in january and i ask you for all of 2021 but if night frank says that last year mmr was minus 14% in terms of sales which is very good considering that two six months were a washout uh what would uh, uh, 21 look like would it be a good 20% over the current year uh, over 2020 i think that's not out of question at all you said it's very hard to project these but certainly uh, sometime in the next couple of years mm. i would expect to see a, a boom period for real estate starting right this is a sector that has always been both in india and around the world a very cyclical sector you do have periods of downturn and upturn and there's very much a reason for that that during mm. the periods of uh, downturn you know supply gets constrained if you look at it there's a, been a lot of talk over the last few years of inventory in the sector but if you really dig a little bit deeper the number of developers that have been working on creating fresh supply over the past couple of years as opposed to just monetizing their existing mm. inventory has been extremely low which yeah. points to you know a period over the next couple of years where supply demand will tilt in the other direction so my sense is that you will have a year where where demand picks up from a volumes perspective and i mm. think it's quite likely that we're already starting that period and and that this year will fully reflect that mm. and that, you know sometime after that once you see that demand pick up once you see current inventory levels get quite low you'll also see a pricing uh, move in the sector so and you know nothing in this sector tends to be very gradual you have sharp downturns <laughs> and sharp upturns So if I if I was to guess I'd say sometime in the next 3 years you'll get one year where you have a 20% price increase and in each of those years you'll see um solid volume increases but again you know this, this is definitely a sector I take your point you know what hurt the real estate uh, sector is that there were half finished houses and therefore people stopped booking under construction was the sense I got people only wanted finished homes do you think the courage to book in under construction has returned or will return sometime soon i think it has but unfortunately for the broader sector i think you know there's a high degree of preference now for organized best in class developers for under construction homes so i think you know the 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 leading players in each market 
are the ones who will stand to benefit disproportionately is the sense we have and it's it, again not something that is depending just on forecasting we've already seen mm. market shares for for leading developers grow very substantially over the last three years and i think that process will continue to unfold because as much of an improvement as we've seen in the environment i don't think we can yet say that developers who were under a lot of liquidity stress are going to automatically come out of that over the over the next couple of years i think the mm. difficulty for large parts of the sector is here to stay but that demand will will we think migrate mm. to the stronger players okay thank you very much uh, pirush shah and hope you have a great 2021 yet again from all of us here and that last answer was a nice way of saying that godrej properties will actually be the beneficiary as people move to well recognized names let's quickly take a look at the past financials uh, well not really relevant because fy21 is such a kind of a you know different year but nevertheless uh, that's the first half okay it's not bad at all the first half as well for godrej has been good and the second half uh, given all the uh, sops coming from government likely to be much better so that sales and i think you'll have revenue a bit uh, and pat also coming up for you okay. uh, and now just one important point yields have shot shot up uh, you, you we will only show you the 10 year because that's the yield which we have ready off the shelf and that itself is up 6 basis points compared to friday 